Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Porky here from Porky's Corner. Today I'm joined by Steve Ward. I'm, I'm told one of the oldest living boxers to currently be active in the UK today. How are you doing, Steve? Welcome to the channel. I'm all right, thank you. Are you all right, Russ? Yeah, I'm brilliant. Great. I'm brilliant. So what made you get into boxing, Steve? Because how old are you now? I'm 64 now. I'll be 65 in August. But I'm like a kid. I'm still training every <laughs> day. Three times a day, every day. You mean this morning? Yeah. I'd done a seven-mile run this morning before I went to work. Never? Yeah, you, you, there you are. You see, you could always come with me, you know. <laughs> bring, a cam <laughs> bring a film crew down and film you. <laughs> yeah. So uh, when did you have your first fight, Steve? And what made you get into boxing? Well, I got into boxing at nine years old. Me, my dad took me to the local boxing club. Which Where were that at? Pardon? Where were that at? That was Nottingham School of Boxing. Dave Needham was there. The former flyweight and featherweight Commonwealth Games gold medalist. Mm. He was there like with me and uh, I didn't like it. I was getting bullied at school. So my dad had got the idea Take him to a boxing club. You know how it is, Ross. Yeah. And uh, I was getting hurt more at the boxing club than what I was by the bullies. But uh, I, I kept at it. Nine years old. My my number one job at nine years old, there were about 20 people up there. You got Harold Bamford, Arthur Mason. They were the trainers. Yeah. My number one job, what were allocated to me, being the young kid of it all, nine year old, I'd got to empty the bucket at the end of the night. And you know what bucket it was. Mm. <laughs> Fantastic job, eh? Mm. And then at 11 years old, two years on, I still wasn't struck on being a boxer. It didn't interest me. Yeah. I had my first fight at 11. Yeah. That was at uh, Daybrook Working Men's Club in Arnold. It was just like Vegas to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when were your last fight then? My last fight, that was the... Uh, that was 2017. So you were 61 on your last fight then? 61, 62, yeah. yeah. Where was that at? That was at Mansfield, it was at the Civic Centre, and to be honest with you, I was fighting this German, it was the same German who knocked uh, Danny Williams out. Oh, Danny yeah. knocked Tyson out, yeah. And he was six foot seven. What yeah. a monster of a man. And I was fighting him for the heavyweight WBC, the World Boxing Confederation, veteran, Championship of the world. Now it was 12 three minute rounds. And I was well in front. I'd, I'd won the first six rounds outright. They were mine. So I'd got halfway and I'd, I'd not lost a round. Yeah. Round seven, I comes out. Still banging away, left jabbing, keeping him at bay. And all at once, my arm fell down by my side. Rotate a cuff. It had gone, totally yeah. gone. I couldn't lift the arm up. Referee noticed it. I got put down, got back up, but the referee wouldn't let me carry on. He says, uh, I know a rotator cuff injury when I see it. Well, I've had it all operated on and everything now, and we're ready for this one. When's your next fight, Steve? It's a big fight. <clears throat> it's going to make history, this one. Because it's on the uh, it's the thirteenth of May, and it's in the Bahamas. Yeah, nice place to go. You want to be in the corner on now, don't you? Thirteenth <laughs> <laughs> of May. Thirteenth of May in the Bahamas on board a cruise ship. It's not uh, one of and Dennis Hobson's uh, shows, is it? <laughs> no, no, no. It uh, it's a guy called Charles Russo. Uh, he, he made all his money in real estate in America. Multi-billionaire. Knows where he's on where. 
He went into boxing some years back. It was his dad who turned him into it. He used to take him to all the shows, this, that, the other. Then he wanted to put his own shows on. Well, I think it's either five or six shows he's got on this year in Texas, yeah. street fairs. He's doing it all differently. But he's putting, now this is the likeable part, he's putting the boxer before anything. Now that's right up your alleyway. Yeah, it is, yeah. The boxer comes first. Yeah, because he's I the think, one in the ring. Pardon? His boxer's the one in the ring taking the blows and dishing it out. That's right. And he says, if there's no boxers, there's no fights. Boxer comes first. He's had enough of all these managers who's penny pinching and taking big percentages and matchmakers. He says the boxer comes first. So he's made a, it's a union. It's called the BMM AFU. And it's the Mixed Martial Arts Fighters Union. Wow. And honestly, Russ, you would do well to have a word or two with him because he's an interesting guy, knows his bits. Oh, this billionaire dude. Yeah. yeah. He's got 30 solicitors and lawyers working on his board. Yeah. So nothing gets by him. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting job. I've got to I'll hold this up and you'll be able to see it. You see uh, that all right? Bo boxing at sea. Sounds like a film, doesn't it? <laughs> Steve Ward, Baron Sayan or something. Yeah. Is that what you're fighting? Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy Lloyd Hawk in English is a Cusidassian. Oh, yeah. It'll be a good one. He's a, he's a six belt champion. It will be one hell of a fight. So basically, yeah. uh, you're 64, <laughs> you're getting up in the morning, eating your four uh, raw eggs and doing your rocky your seven mile run. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you do then? You go to work and then come back and do some more training. Right, what I do, I get up in the morning, I do between a six and seven mile run. Yeah. Then I go to work, I only work part time, four hours. I can't, I can't fit anything else in. Yeah. So I come back at dinner time. As I'm on air now, I'll be doing it later on. I'll be doing another run or a bike ride. Then I've got my own gym where I train. Nobody else comes in it at present. And I do everything there like. I'll be there for about two and a half, three hours tonight. Every day, seven days a week. Have you got a... Get... Get... Sorry, go on. Go on. No, I was going to say you do that seven days a week. Have you got? Are you in a relationship or anything, Steve? Have you got a partner? I'm married. I'm married. And does does I'm your married. does your wife take a is she does she is she second after boxing? No. 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 She's she's on the level pegging with it, in fact, more than likely above it. Yeah. She's everything to me and she backs me up. She's behind me one hundred percent. I tell you what she does, she walks me down to the ring. Yeah. She actually walks me down to the ring. She says, you're a spangly coloured Union Jack swimming costume, tiara on, British flag flying. I normally have four women walking me down. Well, your missus wears a swimming costume into the ring with you, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Brings me down to the ring. Oh, yeah. If you make them part of it, Russ, you've got yeah. no problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, good idea, that, yeah. <laughs> good idea. And uh, do you do any strength and conditioning and things like that? Yes, I do. Yeah, I do I do that regularly. The the weights, I do a lot of weights, but, you know, I've never liked it. It's yeah. so boring. Yeah. Because whatever exercise you're doing with weights, you're doing it repetitive. And, no, nah, it's so boring, but I have to do it. Yeah. Uh, what what sort of people have you sparred with then over years? 
Right. Who am I the now? One, Mr. Marvin Agler. You sparred Agler, yeah? Yeah, I've sparred with Agler. Uh, Lang, do you remember Kirkland? Kirkland Lang, yeah, well, he's from your way, isn't he? Yeah, Clifton. Yeah. Kurt Lang, Tony Lang. Oh, I've sparred with quite a few. Uh, ben. Nigel Ben. Yeah, Nigel. Nice guy. Got a lot of time and respect for him. Yeah, there's quite a few. Bruno. Frank Bruno. What weight are you going to fight at in the Bahamas, Steve? Heavyweight. It is an heavyweight. heavyweight. Why are you about um, seven, 17 stone? Me? No, 15. 15. Oh, so you're a small heavyweight then, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. But as long as I make that heavyweight sector, yeah. they can't say anything about it. I mean, that starts at 14 stone four, I believe. Yeah. Did you have any pro fights, Steve? Yes, I did. I had, uh, now let's get this right. I had 148 amateur fights, 12 losses, 136 wins. I had a good amateur career. Now, my dad was always behind me, as I've just told you. He got me onto it all. Yeah. God, God bless him, he's no longer weird. He'd be over 100 years old now. But now, uh, as, as pro, I didn't shine as much because I just wasn't interested in it. Didn't care. Yeah. I'd lost my push power with my dad. Do you know, it's something to admit. <clears throat> and uh, it's a bad thing to admit. I used to go to fight sometimes and I'd only been to training probably once. Yeah. It, it was bad. I was, I didn't behave well, Ross. Mm. I was a fool to myself more than anybody else. Oh, what best guy you boxed as a pro, uh, Steve? Uh, Not sparred, just box, you know, in a fight. Yeah, to fight. For Yves Monsieur, which he was a I believe he was an Italian, I'm not sure. He was uh, one of the top champions because uh, Johnny Nelson went over just after me and Johnny Nelson beat him, but he beat me. Lang, I fought Lang. Caitlin Lang, yeah? No, Tony. Tony Lang, yeah. Tony Lang, I used to spar with them both and then I ended up fighting Tony. How did, that, yeah. how did you feel about that, Steve? Because you were obviously mates, weren't you? Yeah, it's awkward when you you know each other's moves and everything. You more or less know what they're going to do, how they're going to come out. It's awkward, but you yourself know. In boxing, you turn off when you go in that ring, turn back on when you come out. Yeah. <clears throat> You'll always be a friend, but in there, it's who's strongest and who wants it most. Do you ever do that day was Pardon? Bad day that day, because he must have wanted it most. He beat me. <laughs> uh, I believe you used to be a doorman with Frank Frotch, Carl's dad. Uh, Carl. I worked on the doors. I worked on the doors for about, oh God, 30 years, something like that. In Nottingham? Yeah, yeah, in Nottingham. I worked in Nottingham. I worked at London. I worked at uh, Mansfield. One of the hardest doors ever was Matlock Pavilion. Have you ever heard of Matlock? No, I know where Matlock is. Yeah, uh, one of my pals lives there, but I've never heard of Matlock Pavilion. Well, Matlock Pavilion was right in the centre of Matlock Bath. And uh, I worked there when all the old angels used to come down. And by God, if you were chucking one out, you were chucking a dozen out. You'd got to watch your soul. It were a very, very clingy place that was for them. You and Frank back to back were it back in them days on doors? Yeah, I only worked with Frank a couple of times, like because I didn't actually work at the same place as him. But if somebody were needed, I used to step in sometimes and then I'd be working with him. But yeah, he worked on the, oh, the one on Bottle Lane, Ariba. Ariba. And it was a lot of. Very, very narrow steps. You couldn't pass on them. 
it was one person on them. So if you were chucking somebody out, you got to make sure you got a clear way, otherwise it were a game of Skittles. <laughs> mm. Yeah, we had some we had some fun times. Uh, what do you think about boxing today? Do you think it's changed since you fought, or do you think it's still the same and it hasn't progressed? You know, now it's it's beginning to get too political. Yeah. It really is, and it, it's not it's not a matter of progression. I, I personally don't think it's progressed at all in my eyes. Before, when I was fighting, you knew what was what. Yeah. Now it's all legal wrangles and money and this, that, and the other. You didn't used to have half a dozen fights to confirm who's the best. You didn't need it. No. If you had a close fight, you'd perhaps say another one. But you wouldn't have half a dozen and make money on money on money. And it was the same with the, the titles as well. You'd got your you got your area title. Then you'd got like your your British English title, and then it, it went up, you knew where you were with them. Now there's that many titles, this intercontinentals and I get bewildered by it all, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. Oh, tell me about it. We know where everybody's level were, didn't we? Area, English, British, Commonwealth, European, world. Now, yeah. they skip all that, they get an intercontinental and a world ranking, and then they're getting thrown in and beat up because they've not yeah. learnt, learnt the craft. It's like a joiner back in the day did a seven-year apprenticeship. <laughs> you couldn't give a YTS... You couldn't tell him to build a bar in a jeweler's, go build a you know, or, or a nightclub after two years because he wanted to learn his craft, would he? Exactly. It is an apprenticeship. And a lot of people aren't passing it right. You know, at one time, you you didn't just say, Oh, I'm going pro and go pro. You had to be watched. Were you good enough? How many fights did you have? You've got them turning pro after what? Half a dozen fights now. Mm. At one time, you'd have been laughed at. It'd be 20 fights at least. Yeah. It, nowadays, it's it's so different. I mean, the, all this trouble we Joshua and everything. For God's sake, it's obvious it's just a money blag. And it is. It's one bloody great big money blag. For God's sake, shut the mouths, get in there, do the job, know the verdict. Simply enough. Do you feel that there's too many cooks uh, spoiling the broth? Very the, much so. In the Joshua Fury debate, because it, I, I, I'm, I find it hard to talk about it now because it's, it's beginning to move into overkill, I think. Oh, it's been there some time, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, he, it's obvious everybody wants that fight to come on. Yeah. So get it, get it on, do it. Don't say, oh, he's got to fight him, this one's got to fight him, then he turns a corner and that's got to happen, then this has got to happen. For God's sake, just get it on, give the people what they want, because that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah. Give the people what they want. They don't want to see white and so and so and this one and this one. They want to see Fury and Joshua. End of game. See who wins. End of story. You know what I think, Steve, would be a good solution to it? Because there's, there's obviously a problem that Joshua is promoter and Joshua they keep coming out saying, oh, we want to be undisputed. We want all belts online. Well, this is how I look at it. Why don't they just have the Ring Magazine belt on the line and bin every other belt? That's a good one. That yeah. is a good one. So you can think of that. I can think of it. Why can't they? Because they're hiding behind excuses because they don't really want to give us the fight. They want to keep their fighters in and because if not, they might only get one bite at the cherry. They might not get a second bite if somebody gets hurt. They might only get one bite at it. So wouldn't it be better if they keep building it up and building it up while earning millions fighting everybody else 
And at the same time, in the Reds are thinking they're building up for us. But I know from public opinion what I get every day in my texts and emails that people are now going off it, the turning. Yeah. People are getting very fed up. You know, yeah. just when you think it's going to be on, somebody else steps into it. Yeah. And it's getting, it's getting boring. Dare I say that? Yeah, it's very boring. boring. For God's sake, do something or just shut up and let life go by. Yeah. What do you think uh, about Billy Joe Saunders, uh, Steve? Do you think that he needs to fight Canelo in May or pack it in? Well, the thing is, you know, if he packs it in, he's always going to have that big, big question. Could I? Would I? If? Should I, yeah. Yeah. You know how that is. We've both been there. So at the end, end of the day, I think it's best for him to get it on, give his best, and he knows the answer then, don't he? One way or the other. Yeah. I mean, got, a, a, sorry? No, I was just about to say, you've got to give Callum Smith credit for taking it at four-week notice, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got guts. He knows why he's on way. A lot of, a lot of boxers... I'm one of them, so I know it happens. You train, and you're training hard all the time, and you leave yourself, we'll say, 30% below fight time. So in that four weeks, you can burst up, and you can get it very close to the 100%. You won't get it to the 100 but you can get it close to it. And then you've got the other boxers, what just put weight on, walk around, get plump and don't do anything in between the fights till they get another fight. Because one way and the other, don't it? I would say that Callum, he probably is on the other side, bearing at that 70% ready to kick it up when needed. Yeah, do you, do you think that Callum might have left it in, in, in the gym? Some of the, because he had a lot, he's been a long time out at ring, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, He's got a good brain on him. He's got a good brain on him. He's looked after well. I think he knows better than to leave it all in the gym. You've got to coast it. Still train hard. No reason not to. But coast it so that you're not doing silly things and coming out there too tired. You've got to know that nice little level. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good fight for him. Yeah. What do you think about who's the best fighter to cut to, out of Britain in the last 20 years? Who's, who's for everybody, would you say, in the last 20 years in this country and not ducked anybody? Hmm. You've got to look towards Frotch, haven't you? Yeah. You've got to, because when all said and done, he never ducked anybody and he was always up and, in fact, he was the other way. They were pushing him for it, weren't they? Mm. He, uh, he was a good good fighter. Got a lot of time for him. Good fighter. I would say he's probably the one. You had uh, Kirkland Lang, the run in Detroit. And, well, after that, he just... Went missing. He went missing. Well, we know where he was, don't we? Smoking, Brixton. Smoking weed in Brixton and gambling. <laughs> Bob Marley lookalike in Brixton. Walking around Brixton with uh, dreads. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's so what he says, isn't it, when you talk to him? All right, Curly. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> why didn't Why didn't Duffy get down Brixton and find him? Or send his lads to find him? Yeah. Because in my eyes, you let a world champion slip through the fingers there. Mm. Another Nottingham world champion, wasn't he? Because he was good. Maybe he didn't want to fight. Maybe he didn't want to be found, Kirtland. Yeah, you will never know. Maybe he didn't know whether he was being found or not. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you boxers are strange, strange people. Uh, yeah. bo boxers are very, very it, different. Very different people. Be careful, I know where you live. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Like I'm just saying, you know, like I've noticed, uh, I've been around people like Frotch, Robin Reed, and uh, Carl Frotch. 
all three of them have got a bit of OCD going on. Yeah. You know, they're very regimented in, in their appearances and how they place things. And, you know, <laughs> they're always on go all the time. And <coughs> I don't know. Boxers are funny creatures. I love boxers, me. I love them, but they're very funny creatures. Very, very, very funny. They never sit still. And I just think that it's an hard, hard sport and you've got to get as much money as you can. But I don't want to hear people saying they want to fight somebody just for PR inches in columns when really they don't. That one yeah. sends me crazy, Steve. Well, the only the only person who looks bad if they do that's the soul, isn't it? Yeah. Because if you, I mean, if you want to fight somebody, don't talk about it, do it. Yeah. You know, it's like when people say to me, don't you feel old doing this? Age is just a number. You've heard that a million times over. I was probably the one who started it, but it is just a number. And if I want to fight somebody, I know I'm going to train my damnedest. I'm going to get in there and I'm going to fight him. This guy I'm fighting for this, uh, it's for the inaugural gold division title belt, which is the veteran title belt. Why am I doing it? Because I want to, and I feel that I can do it still. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm training with some of the young ones before, you know, the shutdown and everything. And they find it hard to keep up, with me. Mm. That's only determination because one person wants to do it, really wants to from the heart. And they only half want to do it. There's a difference. Yeah. yeah. As you've said, get in there and fight. If you say you want it, then mean it. Don't don't play around. It isn't a game. If you look at it, you've got tennis, that's a game. Football, that's a game. Rugby, that's a game. But you don't hear of a game of boxing, do you? No. Because that ring can be the loneliest place on God's earth if you're on the wrong side of a beating. And that bloody referee, I'm sure they join in sometime and hit you when you're not looking. <laughs> Brock once said to me, right, he said to me, you're out there on your own, you've got to have everything. And if you if you if you if if you haven't got it right or you've cut corners, you're in for a long night. You just there's nobody can help you when they're in there. Your trainer can only speak to you in between rounds, can't he? Yeah, it like I say, can be a very, very lonely place. You know, there's nowhere to hide. You're either good enough on the day. Or you've you've lost it, and it's down to yourself to make sure you're good enough. All right, let me ask you a few questions about how the sports governed in the UK. Do you think <coughs> do you think it's governed correctly? You don't have to answer that if you don't want to, because a lot of people don't want to answer it. Uh, to, well, professional amateur, yes, that's governed all right, but professional. I feel that it's more governed betterly if they stop mucking around, sidestepping, and got on with the fights in hand. Yeah. You shouldn't let people sidestep and not do things just because they don't want to. They owe it to the crowd. Who puts them there? The crowd. Who pays them to be put there? The crowd. Yeah. So it's down that they owe, they owe the people. And I think that it could be governed that much better in a stricter regime to do that. And we all know that uh, there's certain favourites promoted. Well, yeah, I'm not going there. You know, that grin tells it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I was going to say, but yeah. uh, probably that <laughs> hmm. uh, Where do you see yourself in six years when you're 70? Because I'd like to hope that you're not going to be doing this when you're 70, uh, Steve. No, no. Uh, probably, probably 65 will see me done. I've got something in mind. I've got something in mind. I'm always, a book. 
Bring a book out. It's done. Oh, have you done your book, yeah? No, it's not. It's not finished yet, but it's already in, uh, in motion. We're 12 weeks into it. I've got a fantastic author. You're from Leicester Way, aren't you? No, Doncaster. Doncaster, well. Well, I've got a fantastic author from uh, Leicester Way, like Mr. John Brindley. And yesterday, we got a publisher. Yeah. Which is uh, took it up like so. Uh, that is something what is in the the offing now. Something what you probably don't know, and this is an important little thing. I'm going to show you something here. Go on, there. There you are. Oh, is that for your book? No. Oh, Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah, 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 yeah. The old. Yeah. You're the oldest boxer in the UK then, aren't you, at the moment? No. Oh. I'm the Guinness World Records triple champion and the oldest active professional boxer in the world. Hey, oh, in the world? In the world, yeah. And uh, they've just made a documentary, my life story, called Champ of Champs. That was the little job I've just shown you. Oh, brilliant. And it's won 36 international film awards worldwide, including, you ready? Cans. Oh, brilliant. We'll have to get you off boxing asylum, won't we? There you go, yeah. <laughs> Four weeks ago, it won the Cannes Film Festival for the uh, the best documentary and the, the best, uh, best publisher. Oh, really, really good. That's brilliant. I'm honoured to have you on here today then, Steve, or Mr yeah. Ward. Now, listen, <laughs> I've got two arms, two legs and a I go on the same toilet as everybody else, and I'll never alter. Yeah. I'm behaving myself. I've not said one swear word. <laughs> You're a good lad. Yeah, you are. <laughs> well, listen, it's been great to have you on, Steve. You're welcome on any time you want to come on again. How's that? Thank you. I really appreciate that. And I'll check you up on it, because after this fight, there might be a lot to talk about. There will. Do you want me to put this out today or do you want me to send it to Tech Lads and put an introduction to it and uh, an ending? Uh, what, do you want, what do you want me to do? Do you want it out today or do you want to let me, let, let me jazz it up over a few days? Jazz it up over a few days then. All right then. Is there Please any chance? Yeah. Can you send me a couple of photos of you? You know, three or four photos, five photos, and I'll put them in as inserts or I'll tell Cameron to put them in. No problem. What, fighting or just normal photos with me in the gear? Whatever you want to send me, you send me, we'll put it in because we just had a frank discussion. We've only just met, obviously we met through uh, Terry Curran, didn't we, footballer? He's, he's, your mate. he's your mate, isn't he, Terry? Oh, you'd be surprised who I know. He's a bit, uh, he's a character, isn't he? Just a bit. Oh. Sportsman, we're all crazy, aren't we? And his pal, the dripping tap, Sean from uh, yeah. Ellsworth. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, good, they're good people. I've met, I met Sean's dad actually, Clive. He's all right, and he's Mrs. and them. They're all good people, and there were another gentleman in there as well. I forgot his name now. John. John. I, John. He's John all right. Brindley. That's the author. Of the yeah, book. that's the author, is it? Yeah, yeah, that's the. Yeah, I got to meet him as well. He's all right. So, but yeah, if you send me about five photos, and what I'll do, I'll get Cameron to put an entrance on. And then an ending and some pit. We have to put sponsors on it, and that, and uh, we'll put the inserts in, and we'll, it'll probably be two or three days. Is that all right? That's great. Can you send it me through when you've done it? I'll send you it straight away once it's done. You'll be first to get it before it goes out. Brilliant. Thanks, Raymond. Uh, no, no problem. Keep in touch. You've got my number, Steve. Yeah. You take care, my friend. Take care, my friend. Bye bye. God bless. Bye. <laughs> you liked that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Uh, because we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. PorkyCorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking. <laughs>